Welcome into the Quick Points Podcast. This is our second episode. I'm Pat O'Rourke. Alongside me is Alex Hirsch. What's up? Talking about baseball today. Uh, World Series ended. But, obviously here in Boston, especially, baseball never ends. never ends. It's never an ends ongoing here. season. And the offseason might be more, more busy, more... There might be more attention paid towards towards the off season than the regular season itself. So, the first big development of the off season for the Red Sox was your boy Clay Buckholtz, his option being exercised. Uh, what do you think about it? Oh, uh, as as much as I hate Clay Buckholtz, as much as I think he is incredibly soft, as much as I think that this guy does not belong on this team. I like it. <laughs> you like I, it. I, I don't know how else to say it. I like it. It's a smart move. Uh, you're getting Clay Buckle, who is a, a potential ace, has never really yep. been able to potential. be the ace because he's always hurt, which is s- s- crazy annoying. But he's never been able to be that ace. And uh, But you're getting him at maybe third man in the rotation price at $13 million and then $13.5 million next uh, next year. You really can't ask for a better deal than that. There's no reason not to do that. I think the, uh, the one of the best parts about it would be that uh, he, he's great. That makes him a great trade trip as well, which is, which is why I want him. Because I, I, I want him gone. Yeah. I want him gone. I want him not to do with the Red Sox you anymore. Don't, you don't want to trade him for just, for not, just not nothing. For just nothing. I want, want another... a good player in return. But I'm not... not I'm not sold we're going to get a superstar out of him. Yeah. But I, I'll, I'll take but you don't, a good you don't player. want Bronson Arroyo for Willie Mopena. At least no, I don't want that. I don't want, I don't want Willie Mopena. I want, uh, I don't know, give me, give me like a, I don't even know. It's, it's hard to think of. It's someone, it would, have to, be, it would someone, have to be a lot. Yeah, I mean, I would, I'd like a couple players. Maybe a Kimbrel type. Yeah, give me a yeah. give me a good closer, or give me uh, you know two really really good young prospects, or give me. Um, I don't know about prospects. Give me prospects. a uh, you know uh, maybe a. I don't know. I would take like even a Shane Victorino in his heyday type player too. Like you know, it's solid. Doesn't have to be your number three or number four power hitter, but he could be your number two or your number five or six that hits around 280 to 300 and can get you around 20 homers and close to 100 RBIs. Maybe an Alan Craig in his heyday type player, you know, that all-star level Alan Craig. Gets me a potential all-star. It doesn't have to be a perennial all-star, but a potential all-star, I'll take that. Um, But, no, you're right. You don't want to trade him for just anything. But, in my opinion, you want to trade him. You want to get rid of him. I can't stand him. Here's here's the thing with Clay Buckholtz. we've, We've discussed this. The ace potential is there. He's never put it together, but when he does put it together, we've, we've seen him put it together for two, three months, half a season. He's not put it together for a full season, but we know what his, what his ceiling is, what he can do. And if he puts that together for a full season, he might win the Cy Young Award, and I want to see him do that here. But he's also, here's what the we've also thing. seen is he'd be brittle. Year, he's got a $13.5 million, $13.5 million option for 2017. Uh-huh. So you get... For all intents and purposes, you have him on the Ryan Dempster contract you gave Ryan, you gave Ryan you Dempster for the next in 2013. Two years. Keep him for this year, maybe trade him next year. That's what I would do. I'm not giving him ace money after he hits free agency I'd or anything like that. I'd keep him as like long that. as he has that very, very team-friendly control. I would trade him next year in the, in the mid-season I'd trade. I'd trade him today if it was a, if it was a good it, enough return. It is a good trade, but most likely you keep him around for 2016, you get rid of him in 2017. But... Yeah, yeah, he, he's shown ace potential. He's also shown that he's, he's more brittle than oh, peanut absolutely. brittle. I, I, mean, I don't disagree with you there. It's ridiculous. This yeah. guy cannot stay healthy. A mm-hmm. sneeze knocks him out, just like Sammy Sosa. He's, he, is, he is weak. He is pathetic. Yeah, that's what he is. This, this is not what you want out of your ace pitcher. He, does not, uh, he is not the epitome of what well, he's, Red he's Sox not, want. He's not built to be an ace pitcher. He's not built to be a player. I think, I th- well, I think a he's lot of it's He's not built to be a shootman. He's built to be in the <laughs> hospital. <laughs> I don't he's know if built, I go that far. He's built to be in maybe, the hospital only. He's built to be a patient. a high school coach. He's built to be a patient is what he's built for. All know. right? It's, it's, it's so, he's maddeningly frustrating. And I, I was, I've talked about this the other day. And uh, he is my comparison to Jeff Green on the Boston Celtics. Mm-hmm. I know you don't do cross-sport, you know, uh, Cross sport comparisons, but he is just so maddeningly frustrating because he's so he can be so inconsistent sometimes. And 
while Jeff Green was inconsistent game to game, yeah. Buck Colts is inconsistent year to year. And that's, that's, the, that's the frustrating part. Well, his, really, it's been like a two-year cycle where he, he's, he's pitching great. He trusts his stuff. Something small comes up, turns into a bigger thing. Next year comes out. He's got that in the back of his head that, you know, this previous injury. He's out there pitching tentatively. He gets lit up. Goes on the DL for, you know, for 10 years. Well, I, no, I don't he, want he any goes, pitcher he goes that's on in the his DL head just all the like time. A mental break this guy thing. is in, he comes back and he's, he's good. weak and minded. Like a, yeah. He's weak minded. I don't want anyone on the team that's case, weak. Yeah. He's absolutely it. Yeah. Not, even, not a little bit. Okay, I mean, not, if, yeah, not if a little bit. bit is, you know, means a lot, then yeah, he's yeah. a little bit. But it, he is so weak minded. And that's, I don't want that out of my one, two, or three. I'm sorry. I, that's not what I want. I don't want it on my four or five either. I just, I just don't want him on this team. I like the signing. It's smart, but I really don't want him here. I like it because it makes him a potential trading chip. So, but he's he's not really the only. I mean, there's there's more to this rotation that needs Absolutely. help as well. The rotation has got a it's it's overstocked right now. There's too many mm-hmm. names, and they need more names that are going to be coming in. What the Red Sox really need? They need that one top of the rotation stud type guy. That they had in John Lester. Is he on but this team? got rid of him. I don't think he is. He's not on this team. So he's, he's player team. X. It's he's either... someone we need to sign. Yep. So then what, what we have one, on this team. That's the one player they're away from. Right. He's someone it's we need to rebuild. sign or trade for. But the one we've got on this team then is you've got Clay Buckles, who's now going to be in the rotation if he's healthy. All right? Yep. You've got Rick Porcello, who's not going anywhere with that contract. He's in your yep. rotation. Then you've got Eddie Rodriguez, who proved he could be in your rotation last but year. he's what, probably going to struggle for a year. Just, whether he struggles or it doesn't matter. Yeah. He's in your rotation. Starting opening day, he's in your rotation. But in terms of being that, he could be that player X in two or three years, is what I'm saying. Oh, he could be. Yeah. But he's, he's in your rotation be. next year, opening day. Yeah. Henry Owens has earned his spot in the rotation after last year. So who's your fifth spot? If we think player X is going to be in there, then that, what, what happens with Wade Miley? What happens with Joe Kelly? Those are, and what happens with Stephen Wright as well? Stephen yeah, Wright... For when he was healthy, he earned a spot in that rotation as well. He was very good. Well, I think Miley's probably the biggest candidate to get traded because oh, of... thank God. Because, well, because of, he has a very, very tradable contract, a lot of people would take on that contract for what he gives you, which is he's a big innings eater. Which is nothing. He he's sucks. A good, he's not a big he's a innings good, eater. He didn't even get good, 200 innings. He's a very good third or fourth pitcher. No, he's a, he's a decent he, fifth he, pitcher. He, had a four, he was around a 4 ERA guy. No, he was around a 4-5 ERA guy. Yeah, well, he was a, from... From May on, he was four. He was a, he was at four. Yeah, not at the not, you, but not the season. Him? He gives you innings. He gives you innings. They're not. He's not an ace. He doesn't do. He's not going to carry rotation. But he's a very good third or fourth piece in a very good rotation. I don't like him. I don't like him. I want. I want him gone. He's. I think he should be gone. He. He. He's, he's this guy that he doesn't give you innings. He's supposed to give you innings. He didn't even give us 200 innings last yeah, year. Yeah, 193. That's not 200. He was, a, he was a start shy of, he was one start shy of. It's not 200. If, if he didn't he have had, his bat in April. Look, he, had a, he had a full season and he couldn't give us 200. That's what he's supposed I to will, do. I will take 190 innings. I, I don't want him anyone. on this team. I don't want him on this team. He doesn't make sense to be on this team because you need player X. So get rid of him. Trade him for a reliever. I don't care what you trade him for. Just get rid of him. We don't need him here. So then what happens to Joe Kelly? That's the next question. Uh, what happens to Joe Kelly? Uh, you know my opinion on it. Yeah, I know you want, I want, you him, want, I want him, him as a closer. You want him in the bullpen. You want him as a closer, which I think I, he's perfect for. He's I a two-pitch he's, pitcher. He's, he's definitely got, got closer amazing stuff. Fastball. Does he have closer command? That's the big question. Eh, you, who knows? I mean, if he's just pitching one yeah. inning, maybe he does. You've got to throw strikes. He does. Order, he, he doesn't throw enough strikes. Well, he did He did in that last month. But you uh, know, Joe, even then, he, was, he, he, he was, wasn't He was still unbeatable, though. Oh, um, he was very good. He was he, very good. It wasn't like he was. I keep giving me one, in, one to two innings out of him as your closer. I'll take it any day. He's he is closing material. We don't know what's going to happen with Koji next year. Um, if he's healthy, if he's healthy. Personally, I think I, if, if Koji is if Koji's healthy, he's the closer. See, he's I the closer until he feels. I don't. I don't want him to be the closer anymore. I don't, I'd like. I like him being the Why setup not? man. I mean, what, I think the bullpen's better when he's a closer. He's, he's, he's been one of the best closers in the major leagues when he's healthy for the past few years. But he, I know his, he, he, got, he hasn't been, though. He hasn't been healthy. Even when he was pitching this no, year, been, he wasn't. he's been fairly healthy. Well, no, he I, wasn't good closing material. Good enough for me. He wasn't good I, enough I for me. Him. I liked him. And I thought he was very I'll good. I'll take him as my role. setup man, and I take I'll take Tazawa in people, my seventh inning. I take a lot. I take a lot. I take Koji Uehara in the ninth inning over a lot of people, that includes Joe Kelly. I'd like to move, I'd like to move towards the future. And build, and I'd like to get, start giving Joe Kelly his opportunity. I like Tazawa in the seventh, Koji in the eighth, Joe Kelly in the ninth. 
That's what I like right there. Then I like Stephen Wright as your long reliever. And if I he, think he can make some that's, spot that's starts one. if he wants. You know, he's, his arm's not going to get tired. He's a knuckleballer. Let's get rid of the Robbie Rosses, the Tommy Lanes, the jo oh, um, like Jamachis. All of those guys. Breslow. All of them need to be gone. We need new um, relievers. But uh, uh, just like we were talking about, uh, you know, just like the rotation isn't the only spot that needs help, the bullpen isn't the only spot that needs help, the offense needs work as yep. well. Where, where are the spots on offense that needs work? Well, the biggest thing uh, the biggest thing is the first base. That's the biggest. It's it's not a hole right now. I think it's a concern. Okay. Travis Shaw's Tra there. Travis, yeah, it's Travis Shaw's job right now. Right. Does he, does, he, he deserves he a chance. It? He deserves a chance. It's, uh, 65 games, 13 homers, 36 RBIs. He's, he really hit at a... Played at a 30 home run pace, so yes, he deserves he deserves to be the starting first baseman on opening day next year. That said, you know, again, this is something we talked about before the show. He remind he screams of Will Middlebrooks. Yes, he absolutely but, does scream of Will Middlebrooks. But I, I don't think that's a that's a fair comparison to make. I think you have to go off what what he gave you in the second half of 2015. I think what he gave you in the second half of 2015 was very very good. I I just I. I don't. I don't think he should be here. I know he. I know he gave you great stuff in the second half, but I, I sell high. I sell high on him right now. He screams at Will Middlebrooks. I don't want to take the chance of having him being yeah, another but then, Will Middlebrooks. But then if, so if he, so if he's gone, that's the you, risk you take. You that's the risk you take. If he's gone, then you move, you've got players on this team that you can move around there, or you trade for one. You sign a free agent, first baseman. You could move Pablo Sandoval there. You could move. Uh, Hanley there, um, I'm willing to give that a shot. I'm willing to give Hanley a shot there. You could move Brock Holt there in the meantime as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, mean, I, I don't think Brock Holt is an every. He's not, not an everyday, everyday fix. First, he's yeah. not an everyday fix, but he's a fix until you find your fix. I suppose um, so. Yeah. Uh, you've got you've got plenty of options there. My biggest one would be move Sandoval over there if you're gonna keep him. If you're gonna keep the fat, so move him over <laughs> to first base. Put Brock Holt at third base until you find a fix at third base, and then you can keep Brock Holt as your utility man that rotates and plays three, four well, since, games out of the five. Since we love our prospects, um, the big name I, the big name that comes to mind for me at first base is Sam Travis. You know, the, if we're talking prospects, the big name that comes to my mind is get Pablo Sandoval over to th first base and. Send this Yohan Mankata guy right up the right up the pipeline. Yeah, but I don't know if he's ready yet. Well, you know, I don't know if Sam Travis is ready it's, yet. I, but maybe I, Mankata I mean, yeah, is. I'm, maybe I don't Mankata think Travis is. is ready yet either. He's only played, he's only played half a season at, at Double A. So maybe, I mean, maybe maybe Mankata but, moves but on up. He's ready. fast. I mean, the, we spent a lot yeah, of money I, on this guy. I, I, Mankata's I, a stud. So. I'd like to get third base freed up for Mankata. Yeah. I, I think um, if M Mankata takes either now. second base or third base, and that's where he's going, um, yeah. and. Uh, that might mean that he's, a he's Pedroia's yeah, he's, replacement. He's Pedroia's uh, replacement. He, and that could very well be what he is. Um, but, you know, that guy's going to – he started to shoot up towards the end of the year. I mean, he was – his his arrow's pointing very high. Oh, he had a huge – well, huge second huge half. Huge second half. Um, but, again, this is in the Sally League. We're, you know, he's yeah, still got a ways true. to go. But the, uh, they, they need help at third and first base because Hanley or Pablo's got to go. One of them has got to go. And yeah. – Right now, they're kind of plugged in as your first and third baseman. So you need help at those spots. Because if one of them's gone, you got to figure something else out. Yep. So it, what, are, what are some it. of the options out there in, uh, in free agency? We're, we're heading into winter meeting. Uh, we're headed to well, winter like I meetings. I Chris Davis is the big, the big name okay. at first base. But, uh, again, he's, I don't think he's a good fit for Fenway. So, uh, yeah, big left-handed so. bat, but he doesn't go to the office, opposite field. He goes more, he's more of a left-handed pull hitter. Mm -hmm. That usually doesn't work in Fenway Park, so I don't. I don't. I don't want Davis. Um, plus, I, I think he's. I don't think he's the big power hitter that some people think he is. I think he's probably a little bit more of a flash in the pan type. One name that's getting brought up uh, in free agency a lot um, on the offensive side is Alex Gordon um, yeah. in the outfield. Love Alex Gordon. Yeah, you like this move. Love him. I I hate this move. Well, first off, it's a move hasn't been made yet. Yeah, but if we make this move, <laughs> yeah. I hate yeah, it. He might not even be a, be a free agent. I mean, the Royals have a, have an option on him that can be picked up. So. I hate this move. I, I like tell, it. tell me why you like it, because I don't. I don't even see a point in it. Well, first off, this this outfield that you love, yeah, and it was a very good outfield. They had a, they had a great two months. Yeah, offensively a great one month. You know, between between Jackie and Rusnak. I just don't. I need to see more. Or yeah, I, Jack Jackie and Rusnak is that left and center field. I don't. I'm still not 100 percent sold on them just because. 
I don't know how 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 they can hold up over a full season. I know we know what Jackie Bradley is on defense. We know what Rusne is on defense unknown, too. He's still not known offensively. He had one good month. I think you can say the both and both of them for a defense. And Rusne, think, you know, is good at defense. Before the season, Alex Gordon had it was one sixty one, one fifty nine, one fifty six, and one fifty six in terms of games played. And this season, Rusne, yeah, and it's, well, yeah, he knows <laughs> four years. He, so one hundred sixty two game season, he missed, he missed. I think and then this, this year, six games. but this year he missed about fifty. Rusne games. Castillo misses if he can miss six games in a month, I would I would be happy. I mean, he, that's I, that's what you're expecting from Rusne Castillo. We haven't. I, I you guys are going to be out there on the field. They can play out there on the field. They aren't going to have hamstrings. They aren't going to have groins. They aren't going to have tight calves. Gordon was down old. for fifty games this year. I don't yeah. I don't want that. I don't see the point in it. You finally got an outfield that is producing the way you want it to produce. The reason why you gave Jackie Bradley Jr. all this time was to see that if he could be one of your outfielders of the future. The reason why you moved Mookie Betts from second base to outfield was to see if he could be one of your outfielders of the future. He is now. Well, Mookie and Betts then, definitely And is. then you, yeah. you've got Jackie Bradley there that has proven he is your defensive outfielder of the future if there yep. was no such thing as offense. Ruzanay Castillo, the reason you put, paid him all that money was to be an outfielder of the future. Mm-hmm. The three of them clicked. They worked when they finally were playing together. This is like the first time they actually ever got to play together. When they finally did, it worked. Why are you messing with that? There's zero point. Let it, let it stay. If it, let it keep going the course. If it sucks, you've got Brock Holt. That's why he's on this team, to play there until you figure out a different option. I don't want to touch it. I feel like there's way more pressing needs on this team than fixing, than fixing something that really doesn't need to be fixed yet. If it's not broken yet, don't fix like, it. Like I said, I'm, I just have, I have concerns about having Castillo and Jackie Bradley Jr. as my big plans for 2016. I, I wouldn't, I'm not, I would not complain if they, were, if they were my starting left fielder and center fielder. On opening day, but I would have I would have my worries. But I feel a lot better about Alex Gordon. You, but your your worries your worries are solely based on their at bats. All right, you a team can afford to have two well, yeah, most, bad at bats on their team. A good team can afford to have seven out of nine good players hitting. Yeah, and we've got seven out of nine that should be hitting pretty well. So if Ruzne, who at the bottom is, is, well, we is don't floor know is first base. I mean, first base is an unknown. We should have. What, what's we'll, Pablo going to give you? We'll so. most likely have people hitting at least 250, and Ruzne will be one of those people hitting 250. The question is whether Jackie Bradley Jr. could hit 200. All right, but they're saving well, you so many. They're, they're saving you so many more runs yep. than you're giving up. So I, it, it makes sense to keep them there. You can afford to have Jackie Bradley Jr.'s bad bat because you've got Blake Swihart who has a good bat at catcher. So your, your, your crappy catching statistics are going into center field or left field or right field, wherever Jackie Bradley is, Jr. is playing. Is Swihart going to be the catcher next year? Yes, he's going to be the catcher next year. You, it's dumb to think that Christian Vasquez is going to be is going to be the catcher. Vasquez is clearly going to be the backup. I don't want to get into this what? anymore. <laughs> why, why don't you want... Be, why I, don't I, I want? Because Blake Swihart earned his time. I, he's the catcher I, of the Vasquez future. Everyone Vasquez knows it. it no, Christian Vasquez, Vasquez did hurt. not earn his time. He How earned he, his time as a backup catcher he was hurt for the year last year Blake Swihart clearly superseded him he blew, he, his, clearly, he blew his ECL it's not his fault but he got superseded just like in any other thing like any other sport where Alex Smith done for the year Colin Kaepernick comes in earns his time he gets this, Alex is a, Smith. this is a Wally Pitt Blue Gehrig type situation I'm saying it's to any team that a player goes down and someone comes in and does better it's Tom Brady and Drew Bledsoe it's every it's every sport Blake Swihart has earned his time. They're not taking him out of that. I'm not saying Blake Swihart doesn't deserve to deserve to be the starting catcher in Boston or somewhere else. No, he deserves to be the starting catcher in Boston. And Christian Vasquez deserves to be his backup until Vasquez proves that he's good enough to come back. And then you have a potential great combination as catcher or you have a trading chip. But you can't trade one of them yet. I think Swihart could be an option at first base as well. Well, that's a possibility. With his bat. That's a possibility. Maybe he could be an option at first base. I wouldn't mind seeing that. But I'm not sold on Christian Vasquez being my everyday catcher until he's back fully healthy. And in that case, then you have a potential well, you know trading how, chip. Here's, here's the big thing with Vasquez. This will be the big. This will be our parting before we before we move on. Month of September. We know how good Vasquez was defensively in 2014. Last month of 2014. So you know, kind of when you start to figure things out a little bit as a major league hitter. 277, 
736 OPS. That's something I would take every day and twice a Sunday from a catcher. Yeah, but you, you, that's contradictory to your stuff about what you said about Jackie Bradley Jr. and Rusnik Castillo is where they, 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 they picked it up at the end of the year too, yeah, and you're not sold. Field, so what makes you, want, you so, you, what you makes you so offense. sold on Christian Vasquez? Center field and left field, you want the offense. Not offense. if you're cat, but not if you're, ca- I'll, you don't I'll, need don't, to if your catcher is hitting well. And Blake Swihart hits well. I'm talking about with catcher, I need that. That's a defense first position. And you're Blake Swihart's defense was good. You're controlling the defense. Blake Swihart's the whole defense of the field. His defense was good though. You're controlling the pitching staff. Sure. That's what the catching position Swihart's is Swihart's position, was, he was good, though. How about raking? And Swihart was good at that. He wasn't yeah. Christian Vasquez, but he was good enough to be a good starting catcher in this league. So, therefore, your crappy um, offensive uh, statistics can go into the outfield towards Jackie Bradley Jr., who we know is an amazing defensive outfielder and is not hurt, so isn't coming back off of an injury like Christian Vasquez is. We know what we're going to get out of Jackie Bradley Jr. And you could get something potentially even more phenomenal if he could figure out to have a consistent swing. That's way more for Jackie Bradley's upside on offense is way higher than Christian Vasquez's upside I on offense. I wouldn't say that. Oh, my God. Come on. I wouldn't Are say you that. kidding me? Look at what Jackie Bradley Jr. did in a month. In All a right? Month. It was a month. It was, it was a month. month. And then look at what Christian Vasquez did in a month. Who, whose was better? No, there's no. There, yeah, Zach, thank you. Bradley was there's, a little bit better. A little bit better. Bad, Jackie okay, Bradley Jr. Was, was better than every <laughs> single baseball okay. player in baseball. He, he, was, he was way better. All right? If Jackie Bradley Jr. has the ability to do even half of what he did in that month, that's still better than what Christian Vasquez did. All right? Yeah. So, but, yes, Jackie Bradley Jr.'s upside is way better on offense than it is. Whether, but his downside is way lower. Yes. Okay? Well, I, his, yeah. his, 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 uh, he's either going to be. He's a hit or miss for you, all right? No pun intended. But uh, so I, I, I want Jackie Brown Jr. I want Rusney out there. Blake Swire, keep Christian Vasquez. I'd like him here. He's not a trade chip right now because you don't know how healthy he's going to be. Keep him until he's healthy. Let him play Ryan Hannigan's spot until he's healthy. Then make your decisions. Maybe then you start working up Blake Swihart at first base. Maybe then you can start thinking, well, should we trade Swihart? Should we trade Vasquez? What do we see out of if Swihart's improved his defense so much? Absolutely get rid of Vasquez. Yeah. Well, so yeah, Swihart's improving defensively. I don't know if he'll ever be as good as Vasquez is. We, we I mean, Vasquez know. is one of the best. Vasquez, if he if he hasn't missed a beat, um, which I mean, I think a lot of I mean, a lot of the handling the staff and um, the whole controlling the running game, a lot of that's upstairs, which you know. He's, I doubt he's lost any of that. But it's really the big concern is his arm. Well, and, you know, can he, can he throw out, you know, if he can't throw out 40% of the you know, base stealers, and, then I can live with that. But Handling the staff I, is I, very important, and yeah, that's going to be even important. more important next it's year. Improving, it, it's going to be even more important next year because we're going to have a staff that needs to be handled. Mm-hmm. There's going to be a lot of young players and player X. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about who is player X. Who's player X? Who's the ace on the staff next year? In free agency, there's three big names, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, got David Price, you got Jordan Zimmerman, you've got um, Johnny Cueto. Yep, you got David Price. Your That's it. Cincinnati. That's all you want is David Price. Yeah, if I were to He's choose it. one of them, I'd He's it. go Price. He's it. That's who you go for. If you want Cueto too, fine. Okay, get, get both of them. I don't I would, care. I would go both of them. <laughs> I would go both of them. By all means, go both of them. Win us the World Series next year. I'm okay with that. <laughs> But you want David Price. Price is the guy that gets you back to the playoffs. He's what you want. He's what you lost in John Lester. He's good. Uh, we, we assume it's what you lost in John Lester. My big concern with Price is can he pitch in Boston? That's your concern with any person, though. No, but, but yes, you, there's no you, there's no person you, that can prove he can things. pitch in Boston that hasn't pitched here. When you see things, I mean, you're seeing it from afar, you know, you see the mentality of these guys. You see the way they carry themselves on the mound in the media. Price has proved he can pitch in three different markets. What makes you think he can't pitch in Boston? Well, for one thing, the pitch in front of... Detroit's a pretty big market for baseball. Yeah, but it's not Boston. It's not Boston. No place is Boston. Tampa Bay is... No, no place is Boston, though. Playing in Tampa Bay is like playing in the studio. No one's disputing that, though. There's more people watching in the studio than there is in... But there's no... No place is pitching in Boston unless you pitch in Philadelphia, really. That's the only place that can be comparable to Boston. That's the only place where you're Philadelphia. Fans. Philadelphia. Yeah, yeah, I'd agree with that. You have the ability to sign and keep this young core intact. That's what I like about Price. Price is the guy that gets you back to the playoffs. He's the ace you want. He's the ace you need. He should be able to pitch in Boston. He technically he has pitched here multiple times. Multiple. He's probably pitched at least a, over his career a full season in Boston. Maybe. It's just he. 
He's big good thing, enough to pitch this in Boston. That's the big thing with me with prices. I don't want to give, and you're going to give him probably six and six years at twenty five to thirty million a year for a guy going into his pay age. It. You've his got age, the money. But going into pay his it. age thirty one season. I don't care. This pay guy's it. Gonna be, this guy's gonna be thirty five, thirty six years old. You're paying him thirty million. So then, a year. what's your op- other option? I show use, me, I show me another market. option. Trade market. That's the worst trade option. Trade market. Why? The dumbest option. You got so many prospects. You, but you want, you want to, but you need to trade in order to get the starting pitcher that you need on this team. You have to trade one of your prospects that is a core member of this team already. You can't just trade the only no, one that you could. That. Yeah, there's only one player that you could trade that's not a core member of this there's, team. There's one player I wouldn't trade that's Andrew Bogarts. There's only, but. And you'd Blake really have Swihart, to really have but, to but, but you're but you're saying that Blake Swihart and Mookie Betts and who am I missing I'd, there? I trade Swihart. But they're core members of this team's future and right now as well. And you don't have to trade them by getting an ace. You can sign an ace instead of trading them. I'm not trading Swihart. I'm I'd not trading Swihart. Betts. I'm Swihart, not trading Bradley. I'm not trading Castillo, Betts. and I'm not trading Bogart. It is so dumb to trade any of, of those pitchers? guys. How about some of the pitchers? How about no. Owens? How about? Brian Look, Johnson. There's no point. See, I would trade, I would trade Henry Owens. No, there's no point. Why would you break something up that's good? Why would you break that up when you have the ability to not break it up and I mean, just how, add how, to how it? How do we know it's good? Because it's been good. We do know it's good. What we saw is good. A few good months. A few good months, and that's okay. And From young players they, when they came up. From what they showed players, was good. Young players playing for nothing. They, but they showed no it was good. There was no pressure to win. They, people, people stopped paying attention. Oh, my before. God. There was so much pressure, though, to perform. It wasn't playing in the pennant race in Boston. It wasn't. It doesn't, but they still felt they, they pressure. They had nothing to lose. They still felt pressure. You go out there with a team of these kids, and they go out to another bad start. We'll see, we'll see what happens then. It would be much harder. There's a lot more pressure with a team. The team we saw in August and September, there would be a whole lot more pressure. Going into the season. And with an ace on this team, David Price on this team, ahead of them, as well as Clay Buckholt ahead of them, and Rick Porcello ahead of them, uh, Rodriguez and Henry Owens as your four and your five. How about, how about you, the bats? You don't, have to, you don't have to worry about that pressure nearly as much. That pressure is off their shoulders that you're speaking of. Why break this up? You're saying you'd rather get rid of a core piece of this team to acquire another core piece of this team rather than just acquiring a core piece of this team and yeah. getting rid of no one. That wanna, makes no sense. His, I don't want to be paying a guy in his 30s. Why? We can spend years. money. This is baseball but yeah you can spend mo- yeah you can spend this money this is baseball you the, and you can get out of it too do they want to be the Los Angeles Dodgers does every team want to be why the, the Dodgers Angeles? are in we're in uh, yeah, made, the Dod- almost made it to the World Series yeah the Dodgers have they've, they've made it to the playoffs and they've got knocked out in the ALCS or the ALDS the last three or four years NLCS and NLDS never, they've never been a team where you say well like, that's oh a my thousand God, that's times you know how much World better series. that is than we did the last two years a million times better yeah I agree I agree with that so but I'll I'm take talk- that right now in Boston you want to win the World Series okay but I and I agree and I don't think going signing- to the LDS going to the ALCS there's a difference though there's a difference because they're signing multiple players I'm talking about signing one player one player that is exactly what you need I'm not, and you're not losing not anything else on it I'm not sold on any pitcher in Boston you're taking a chance on anyone you bring in I I'd want rather, it on some. I'd rather take a chance on someone that you don't have to lose someone as well. I'm not giving up someone for, 20, for another. I'd rather have a guy in his 20s than a guy in his 30s. Prime years ahead of him at less money. And giving up a piece. Yeah. You, that's, gotta, that's, if you want to get something, you got to give it up. As Tony Maserati up. would say, that's stupid. Oh, God. <laughs> S T O O P I D. Stupid. You make a higher, higher pitch. That's stupid. S T O O I P. That's bad. I, I can't yeah. even spell it. That's how stupid it is. <laughs> All right? It doesn't make sense. It, it, you, can, you can acquire, win now, and build towards the future. That's what Dombrovsky wants to do is win now and build towards the future. By signing price, you're winning now, and you're still building towards the future. There's no better way to do it. That's what I think. I think you want to. No, there's it, silence. You wanna, you're out of pause. That up, was nope. it. You get it. You want to get something good, you got to give up something good sometimes. No, but you don't have to in this situation, and that's the point. All right, that's the end of Quick Points right. today. Alex <laughs> we're, tapped out. We're ta- I'm done with this argument. All right, that's the end, of quick, po- end of quick Points today, all right? Uh, I hope you enjoy it. Tune in uh, later this week. We're going to do our inaugural four and out. We're actually going to do it. We're going to do it. It's going to happen. It's going to be a video piece. You can find it on BU News Service. Uh, it should be really good. Four fast-paced arguments, uh, then a quick prediction, all right? And it will be fast. If we're four and out, it's going to be about four minutes long. So uh, that, that's the goal. Hope you enjoyed it today. Have a wonderful week. I'm Alex Hirsch alongside Pat O'Rourke, sports editor for the News Service. Uh, take it easy. Have a good week, everyone. <laughs>